Welcome, my name is Steve. We're going to be covering the PWS100 TD1 tape digitizing station, uh, version 1.3 of the release software, which uh, was released in early January 2016. So uh, let's get started. We'll, uh, we'll go through this uh, brief PowerPoint and then we'll go on to a live demo of the uh, user interface. So we'll cover main features, workflows, features of the uh, graphical user interface, other features, and uh, we'll conclude with a solution example with the product. So the product, um, the concept of this product is uh, reason for being is to provide a cost saving tape migration with a simple and intuitive user interface. We want to provide a secure archive. So Sony's knowledge of videotape machines, we are providing the most secure sort of playback and, and checking uh, from a tape machine and then archiving to optical disc media with, again, a very secure method using our uh, write verify feature. So more details on that as we go. And then we want something that's easy to configure, basically a one box server solution for this application with uh, the software pre-installed. We'll go through more details there. So benefits here is uh, you have a confident tape migration. Uh, we, we play the tape, it's digitized, and we have extensive logging for both the tape machine and for the file, uh, QA of the file and logging of the tape machine's condition during the playback. So we have a very secure method there. Cost savings, uh, because we have a, in a single server, we can handle up to four VTRs. The process is uh, very efficient by using a single operator to manage the digitizing, QA, and uh, other tasks. And then a uh, quick start, everything's uh, ready to go. Power it up, set your preferences, and it's ready to go. Here's a typical configuration where you're archiving legacy tape. So with the PWS100 TD1, it's uh, optimized for standard def and high definition tape machines. Its codecs uh, are the MXF codecs for standard def and high def handling up to four VTRs and, uh, uh, and actually up to four uh, ODA devices. And then down below the PWS 300 TD2 is optimized for HDCAM SR. So it's, the bit rate is uh, much higher and we have more options with uh, uh, higher bit rate codecs with the PWS 300 TD2. So both systems will uh, output their files with XMLs so that you can use it in your asset management system. Or if you want a very simple but very powerful asset management system, you can use our content manager. It's, uh, one license is bundled with each ODA drive. So that's something you will already have. And it's just a, a easy way to simply manage the cartridges on the shelf that have been written by the tape digitizing station. So going through main features, uh, going from left to right, you've got several VTRs that this will uh, control, um, both standard def and high def. We do a channel condition check so that we know what's going on with the VTR. If it's an analog VTR, it'll be, uh, of course, the, uh, the servo status, uh, which is key to the quality of the playback video. If it's a digital deck, we'll be monitoring the channel condition, which is the the quality of the digital signal coming across. Uh, we have an automated QC, which you have an option to use. Uh, so the file then is QC'd both audio, video, you know, luminance, chrominance. So there is also uh, MD5 uh, hash value that can be generated for additional uh, file integrity check, export to, prox uh, to proxy and metadata, which we me mentioned. So the uh, a low res proxy and XML for an asset management system uh, can be exported. Uh, we do have multi codec support, so you can pick the codec that most suits your application and your needs. And then we ha do have baseband monitoring, both uh, SDI and embedded audio for um, for checking the quality of the um, of the file itself, and and also for directly checking the file. Uh, playback off the cartridge, which is a unique feature of ODA, 
but that file can be played and reviewed without actually transferring it to a um, to a host computer. So um, uh, several other main features uh, over the um, several software updates that have been done over the past year and a half. Uh, you have up to four inputs, a uh, choice of uh, XAVC or MPEG-2 codecs. Uh, we've recently added uh, support for closed captioning, which, uh, you know, in the U.S. is a requirement by law, so we can uh, extract um, closed captioning uh, data from the tape and keep that with the file. Uh, we can confirm the high-res playback uh, from the ODA drive. Uh, we can additionally, a new feature is to make two copies simul simultaneously on uh, two ODA drives, so you have a primary and a backup uh, cartridge, further saving time to you know, do that as a separate uh, process. Creating subclips is another user request. This can either, either be done manually by marking it in out points or automatically at time code breaks if you have uh, time code breaks on the tape. And uh, several other user requested uh, features. Clip naming preset uh, is there now. Another important feature, tape digitize without nine pin remote control. So for DV tape machines, one inch tape machines, you don't have to have it connected to a remote control. So the user would manually uh, start and stop the tape machine and the digitizing. So several other features and they'll, they'll come up as we go through the whole process here and the whole workflow. So typical workflow here is you start in an admin sort of uh, a preparation stage where you may have a list, an Excel spreadsheet of time code in and out points for the tapes, some other basic metadata. This could be, this may already be on a spreadsheet. So these uh, database files can be imported by the tape digitizing station. So this would speed up the process of uh, getting the digitizing started. So user would manage uh, the digitizing perhaps input additional metadata for each clip if it's needed. And then there is a, um, a review QC stage, well, preview QC stage where you would physically, you want a pair of eyeballs looking at the file playback and uh, you want a human to either pass or fail their both audio and video sort of uh, inspection of the file with comments. And then, depending again on the workflow, you can automatically trigger the the uh, the step where the file is transferred to the ODA drive after the review is complete. So, if there's any question, the tape can be reviewed, redigitized if needed, and the process can continue. And uh, the final step would be writing the file to the ODA drive, and if needed, a database export for uh, another content management system to track what, what is on each of the cartridges. So a few slides on the user interface, and again, we're gonna go through uh, a few workflows in detail. But on the left side, you have uh, global menus. So these are basically a digitized menu and a uh, workflow menu. And then down below on the left side, uh, maintenance settings, help, uh, help menu, and uh, log out. So those, those are always there. And then towards the center, these change depending on uh, where you are in the, um, in the workflow. So right now we're looking at the uh, ingest stage. So, so these three will tell you where you are. So this is the ingest. So you'll see this ingest panel where we're looking at a particular input and uh, playing the tape, marking in and out points, giving the clip a name. In this case, clips were not given a name, so the system assigns. Uh, a, u a unique name, basically clip and then a, a year, month, date, and time um, name. And then over to the right are the, is the file list of files that have been digitized and their status, whether the ingest is finished and if the transfer is completed or not. So um, there's a basic um, user interface. So in the uh, digitizing application, there is this uh, side panel that can be expanded. So this is the same screen we were looking at, except we expanded this task list, list uh, side panel. And this, just, this is just giving us the, uh, the different tasks that are being executed. So 
We are, you know, working with up to four VTRs, so this will be telling you um, whether it's ingesting, whether it's completed, and, and what's happening. So uh, that's something that a user may need to check on. So now moving on, we've moved on from the ingest uh, screen to the review screen. So what's happened is just the the contents of our, of our screen, as you'll see graphically, have shifted over to the left. And now I have this file list that I did see in the ingest screen, but I have an additional panel on the right, a player window, and then a metadata window, and a, um, and actually the QA report is uh, displayed in a tab here also. So we'll, uh, we'll take a look at that when we look at the live, uh, uh, the live screen. And then the storage status is set here too, so that you can monitor how much remaining uh, hard disk space you have in the system. All right, so the tape digitize station has a uh, embedded technical QC function. So during ingest, the VTR channel condition is monitored and logged. And then for analog decks, uh, as I may have mentioned, the uh, servo status is also monitored and, um, and, and logged. So uh, if there's any time code breaks, freezes, uh, any, any abnormality, those are logged. And then after ingest, after the file is created, the file is examined for uh, video luminance and chrominance and audio. And those settings are available for you to customize also. So in the, uh, the manual QC, when we're in the player window, as you can see, we have, this is the full screen display. So we're in the review sort of part of the workstation, though this, this QC panel will have a time code and whether there's a um, issue that is shown here and the time code that this occurred. So when you select a particular item on the list, it'll jump to that time code and you can examine that to either uh, fail the digitize or pass it uh, or make a note about it. And then the final step, uh, after everything's approved, you wanna transfer this to another location that could be an ODA drive or a shared folder on the network for further processing. Uh, but in the transfer window, this is where you set up uh, destinations. Um, file may go to an edit room for further uh, work, or it might just go right to an ODA drive for uh, archiving. So the uh, transfer settings are set up in the um, in the settings, the settings global menu, and then there's a sub menu there for transfer. So we set up uh, network locations there and our drive settings are also shown there too. So moving on to the ingest settings, the uh, workflow, there's a pull down for workflow. And as you can see, the, the different combinations of workflows are listed here. So this can be either ingest only, ingest and transfer, or ingest review and transfer. So depending on whether you need to quickly get the file archived or you want to you're quality conscious and you want to examine the file before it's archived. You have different workflows that are available. Once you set up workflow, you can save the workflow or the workspace um, and recall it and use it again. So um, your settings for the workflow and the in and out points can all be saved. If you have, if you have tapes that are uh, with the same in and out points, say a, a program series, uh, with the same in and out points. Uh, those can all be saved so that uh, those don't have to be re-entered. So as I mentioned too, the database import, this is something that you may have a spreadsheet uh, with the time code in and out points and some other basic metadata about uh, the tapes and the, uh, and the uh, segments on the tape. We can import that database and you can use that uh, within your workflow. Another new feature here too is the fact that we can play the, the, the file directly off the ODA drive, being that it's a USB 3 mounted drive, and we can play that directly to the client workstation. So we can examine the file itself without actually uh, transferring it, taking the time to transfer the whole file to a, uh, to a device and then playing it from that device. So we can spot check uh, in a similar way. We can spot check the file you can play the beginning of it, the middle of it, the end of it, that's, that sort of thing. Uh, another new feature, too, is uh, the capability of making uh, two files. So 
once the file is uh, is approved and accepted, we can write it to two drives instead of one so that you have primary um, and backup. Um, creating subclips is also made a lot easier. So uh, you can manually just mark in and out points uh, throughout the tape, and those will result in, in subclips in the system. Or if you have uh, time code breaks, there might be intentional time code breaks, or uh, they might be different material, but you can ask the system to either digitize the whole tape as one file, or when there's a time code break, split that file and, and give me separate files. So you have uh, both available. So the XML transfer feature is also uh, to output the metadata that you may have imported and you may have added additional metadata. So there's some basic metadata in the system about the, uh, the codec and uh, create time and that sort of thing. And there are also custom fields that you may have added um, to further identify the clip. So we can uh, transfer that uh, XML out to your uh, media asset management system or other system to travel along with the main file. So the transferred file, when the file is created, right, we can either transfer this to an ODA drive or transfer the file to a network location or do both. So in the ingest settings screen down towards the bottom, if we chose a transfer workflow, we first pick the destination and then we choose what do we want to transfer to that shared folder, whether it's the full res only, full res and proxy, uh, or other items. So that's highly user selectable and configurable. Another new feature too is digitizing without a nine pin. So we can now take a live input and digitize. We received a lot of requests for that. So uh, it doesn't only have to be a tape playing, it can be, just be any live SDI input for uh, digitizing. And this is what the, the front and rear panel, so it's a one rack unit server. It's a Windows 8 embedded controller basically, but um, it is a, uh, it's a dedicated sort of application, so no other applications can reside on the server uh, because the priority is of course uh, digitizing the inputs in real time and not dropping any frames. So we must maintain the performance and quality. So we have up to four inputs for the tape digitizing station. There are four USBs on the back. There are two U USBs on the front. Uh, these are for the uh, ODA drives or any other peripheral. But uh, normally the, the PWS is sitting on a network and you have clients uh, logging into it to do, um, to do the digitizing. And then for the VTR remotes, we have a pair of uh, RS-422s that are, that are, we're using RJ45 connectors with a special cable to split this out into two RS-422 connections to uh, up to four decks. And then we have um, option for backup power supply. So let's take a look at a solution example. So this is a uh, pretty much the, the starter or the, the simplest case. We have the tape digitizing station. We have a pair of uh, ODA drives. You have either a, a VTR with an SDI out with a digital output, or if it's an analog deck, you will use a, an A to D converter and uh, an audio embedder also. So the inputs would need to have both the video and audio embedded. And then a client sitting on the, on the network so that it can do the digitizing. And uh, at the end of di at the digitize, what um, you might do is output this uh, XML and proxy as a zip file. Uh, and this is in a zip file because that's the format that our content manager software needs to see um, the file as uh, for importing. So it'll import the proxy and the XML and the cartridge information. Uh, and manage uh, the cartridges off sh off shelf, so you can search metadata and locate clips and cartridges. So in this scenario, if you had a 1.5 terabyte ODA cartridge, if you were going for the highest quality uh, HD XAVC 100 megabit per second, you'd have about 24 hours of storage on a 1.5 terabyte cartridge. Of course, you'd have double that with a 50 megabit HD. 422 uh, MPEG, K, and yet more at 35 megabits.
So for the client computer, nothing really special is required there, but uh, CPU, uh, Core i5 is where we is what we recommend, memory of 8 gigabytes or more, and then we support Windows and Mac uh, OS for the client PC. Chrome browser is preferred, but Safari and Internet Explorer uh, support are not far behind. So let's uh, move on to the live demo of the user interface. All right, so let's get started. Um, so we'll open up a, a Chrome browser, and I have a, a favorite set for the, um, the TDS uh, login. So I have the IP address of the um, tape digitized station server set up here on my network. And uh, I'm looking at one tab in my uh, Google Chrome browser. So uh, what I'll do is, let's just go full screen with this. So I have several, um, several, several uh, users set up. So admin, I have a password set up and I'll log in. And here's my, um, my, sc my ingest screen. So uh, as we pointed out, we have the uh, global menus here. This is the digitized menu. Uh, workflow menu here is also along with settings help and log out. We have a task list that's minimized right now, but if I um, open this up, this will just show me what ingest tasks are uh, uh, going on and if there's any review tasks that uh, need to be done. So that's my uh, task list. So at a glance, I can see if I'm digitizing several tapes, I can see what's, uh, what's going on. But let's, uh, let's start with just a basic digitize, right? I have, I have this, ses this system set up as a three in, one out. So it's connected to three VTRs. I do have a, a I'm using the, f the fourth port as an output port to a uh, HDSDI monitor for my quality uh, checking. But for the purposes of this tutorial, we'll be looking at uh, setting things up on the user GUI and how that works. So I have SDI one selected. I can uh, select um, the, the fourth, the, this is the only output, so that's the only choice there. So if I had a, a, a HDSDI monitor connected, I would be there. And, and then the toolbox here is what we use to set up the ingest. So the uh, ingest settings, and maybe we'll take a little closer look at this. So ingest settings, I can uh, either manual capture batch capture or live capture. So the live capture I mentioned before was uh, where I don't need uh, RS-422 control and I just control the re recording and capture uh, myself. So in manual capture, um, it's sort of a subset, but um, let's leave this on batch capture. When we set this up, I'll point that out again. Our time code reference can either be the embedded LTC in the uh, SDI signal, the um, uh, the time code taken from the RS-422 control, or again, VITC from the SDI or VITC from the RS-422. So uh, I'll leave this at the 422, but the important choice here is the uh, workflow choice. So in this pull-down menu, you see I have all of the workflows that are, that are available in the system. So uh, we'll, take, we'll take something... Uh, fairly straightforward. Uh, and let's do a uh, ingest review and transfer. Okay, so this will ingest uh, the file, it'll wait for me to review it. Uh, and after I approve it, it'll be transferred. And actually, I want to take this a little further. So I want to do a, a quality check. So let's so we show the, the, the round trip here. So we'll do an ingest quality check review and transfer. Okay, so this will show several stages uh, of the workflow. So notification next comes up is um, who do I, whose job is it? Who's, uh, who do I need to notify? And I will say that um, the user that's logged in as Steve will get the notifications of uh, the progress of this. And then the workflow settings here, let's Maybe scroll this down a little more to the uh, workflow settings here for ingest. Uh, so I've got to pick a video standard. So I have HD SDI 
uh, 5994i coming in. I choose a codec here. We'll say I, I want to choose a MPEG, MPEG HD422 audio codec. So it's basically uncompressed audio, eight channels of uncompressed audio. And then um, valuable feature here is for the proxy, what audio do I want on the um, left and right channels of the proxy audio? So if I only had audio on one and two, that's fine. If there are additional audio, so for proxy audio, I have choice of uh, what channels I want to assign to the left and right side of the, um, the proxy uh, playback. So uh, this might be a typical setting here. I can set the thumbnail frame to be delayed from the beginning of the file here. And uh, there's an option to stop the ingest if uh, I have uh, some freeze frames occur so I don't waste hard, hard disk space. And then quality check. So there's a default profile and then there's a user profile. I'll use the default. So uh, again, you can choose to stop the workflow if there's errors uh, detected rather than continuing um, with, the, with the job. And then a review. So who is going to review? So here we, 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 we assign that task and we'll notify this user about um, uh, that the review is ready for them. And here's the uh, transfer function. So after the file is completed, I've set up a shared folder on my uh, Mac Mini client, which is what I'm doing the demo from. So this is the IP of my Mac Mini, and I have a shared folder uh, on my desktop uh, that the PWS can find to put the, the file. So it'll be coming to me locally here at the client. And then this is what I want uh, the, the tape digitized station to send me. I want it, the full res, I want the proxy, I want the thumbnail, I want the QA report, I want the metadata, XML, and the MD5. All right, so those are the setups for the ingest setting. I can submit that. All right, so next step is to set a uh, in and out point. So I'll, uh, I'll do that here. I'll mark an in. Uh, I'll mark an out. And again, these, these can also be imported uh, from a spreadsheet. But uh, I'll just manually set these, or I can type them in, select this and type them in. So I have in and out points. Uh, this preset here is a time code. So if I wanted the file's time code to be different, I can preset the file's uh, time code start value in this area. I um, have an area for a name. So this will be my uh, first, um, first clip. Uh, some descriptive name. And I am in uh, batch mode. As I mentioned before, the digitizer is in ba batch mode. So this add to list is here. So this is, this, I'll be able to add uh, other in and out points to this. If I, over the tape, if I had other uh, segments I wanted to digitize. So this would be um, batch mode. And I'll add the one, just one more as an example. Just take a few seconds um, for the purpose of this. And this this will be my clip two. All right, add to list. Now, um, something I didn't do yet. Real. The system does want to want to know the real name to organize the clip. So, I'll say I I know that this is HD Real two. So I've got that set, and I add this to the list. So the purpose of that real uh, name is to track clips. So um, uh, so a folder will be created. So the HD real one folder will contain clips that I've digitized um, from this. So if I hit submit, I set the real name for one of the clips, and it took it took that as um, the real name for both clips. So the uh, ingest is started. I've got status that it's in progress and the fact that it's uh, recording. I've got my uh, monitoring also uh, um, set up here. So uh, if I need to monitor other channels, um, I can do that. So the first clip is finished. The second clip is being digitized. So those clips will appear on my clip list. 
Um, so if I refresh this, I've got um, Steve Clip 2 and Steve Clip 1. So these are the most recent. And you see the workflow ingest is completed. Quality check has been started on this one. And then it'll just stop and wait for me to review. Uh, quality check is going on on this one. And I'm going to enable auto refresh. Being that this is a web page, um, changes are only shown when the web page is refreshed. So we have an auto refresh that'll refresh about every five seconds. All right, so the review is, uh, is now ready and waiting. So if I click the review panel, I can take a look. I select the clip that I want to review. And I hit play, review it. And if everything looks good, right, I've reviewed it. I can look at the basic metadata, which is here, the name. If I want to put a description here, I can add that at this time. And this looks like a uh, festival. Um, there's other basic metadata that's here. I'll scroll through so you can see what's there. So this is basically the technical metadata for the file. As you noticed, I asked for MD5, so that's in this basic tab. Uh, Q QC did not find any errors here. There's a custom metadata tab here too, so I can add a uh, custom field. So I can add that custom field and say, and put a, a name there. So I can, I've added some XML uh, metadata. And then in the third tab is my QA report. And this is the beginning, this is the beginning of the clip. So if I, if I chose this, this line, you'll see the playhead will snap back to the, to that time code. So if there are other reports in the QA um, tab, I, I jump to those points. All right, so that's my uh, QA report. Um, now, a couple of other features I can show you is um, the beginning of the file, let's see, starts at this balloon. If I wanted to choose a, a, different, a different thumbnail, there is a, a button to um, select thumbnail, so I can reassign the thumbnail. So you see for my, uh, my clip representation, that thumbnail uh, will change, and that's been updated. So if we're starting in, in black, we can reassign thumbnails. And then I can also set uh, subclips from here, too. So this were a, a long clip, and uh, I needed to split it up. I can set uh, in and out points. We'll say I take an in point here, an out point here, and copy subclip. So I'll say this will be my subclip. And now that's, so that will be added as a uh, subclip to my uh, list of clips. So uh, that's not, that now shows uh, up here as a uh, added subclip, and it leaves the the original file, uh, you know, as 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 it is. All right. Okay. So this is an example. I've got a clip that's finished. It's ready for review. I signed in as admin, so this review is grayed out. I can't review it. So I have to be Steve to review this. So let me log out and log back in as the username Steve. And when I do, I'll know that I've got some work to do uh, because there's a review waiting for me. So I see there's a clip here. So if I go to the review part of the workflow, I would need to uh, review this, so I would review the clip. I would look at the QA report to see if there's anything I need to look at. And it now review is, uh, is enabled, so I can now pass or fail this. We'll say I pass this, and I say um, uh, no errors, all okay. If there's any other, other notes about that, I could put this in here so that the person handling the file next would know that I, uh, I did review it and that I put a note in there. So now when the screen is refreshed, my review is completed. 
and the transfer that I had set up will uh, will also uh, take place. So let the system uh, process that review. So that's completed. So now if I go to my folder on the Mac, which is where I um, have this shared folder. So this shared folder is where the system sent the files that I requested. So there is a, a setup on the on the transfer and this the setting that I left it at was just leave it as the managed the managed names that the tape digitized station is using so these are its own database um, but for me I I like the clip name that I used so there are other content management systems that along with the the XML that came with this the uh, the clip name would be embedded in the uh, in the XML. So this XML has the metadata, including the clip name. So, uh, but this put this in a folder for HD Real One, and then a subfolder for that clip, and then it, all the related files. All right. So what I can do is for for this clip, since I haven't reviewed it yet and the transfer hasn't happened, I'm going to show you the transfer settings. So in settings, transfer, these are the options. This um, first one, we know that's working because we, we found the file in our shared folder. So this is where I set the path to that shared folder. Now the, the very top is a, the destination path format. So I just left this as base path, the real ID, which you saw as that um, uh, unique ID the clip ID, again, the unique ID, and the clip name. So what I want is, is not the clip ID, that unique ID. I want the clip name that I used. So, so I'll use uh, simply clip name. So there are several options here, but the simplest one is just base path, which is that destination shared folder, and clip name. And you know what I'll do is I will put, let's put the real, the real ID in there too. So it's in a folder. So this will be in a folder first, the real ID, and then I'll see the clip name. So I'll save that change to the system. All right, I'll go back to digitize. And I will complete, I'll complete this, this review. So I can choose review down here in the player window or I can choose review up here. So we'll say I reviewed it. I like it. I'll say it's all okay. I'll submit that. The system will process that um, review. So uh, once I refresh the, the page, I'll have a uh, review that's completed. The uh, transfer now starts. All right, so I've created a second clip to show you the uh, clip naming when we transfer. So I just finished reviewing this uh, clip, um, and the transfer should be completed. And now if we go to my, um, my shared folder, what I'll find there is um, those, uh, those first uh, ingests that, that I did. The most recent one that I did, I selected that it used my uh, my clip name, so new Steve clip is is used there, and I also asked it to append the the real name in front of that, so I can either either have this real name in front of it or not. I could just have the the clip name alone, but you see, you have total freedom to assign the clip naming to suit your needs. So uh, from here, this. Uh, on the shared folder might go into an edit room for further processing or for ingest into your own content management system. Okay, let's go back to the interface. So in the transfer section, this is where I can choose uh, where I send the file. So I have uh, two drives here. If I know I want to send the file to this drive, I simply I've got the drive, I select the file. This is a, a case where I'm manually setting, sending the file there. 
and this is, but what do I want to archive? Uh, normally I'm just archiving the full res, but if I want to archive this other information for possible use with a content management system, I'd answer yes. So the request has been put into the system, and then we'll see this task will show up here momentarily. So if we, again, being a web page, if we refresh it, we'll see, let's see, I think we have to look at the, it's the most recent are on page one. So that request has been put in and you can see this Steve new clip is now being written um, to the cartridge. Again, I could automate this so that the transfer would go directly to an ODA drive rather than my uh, network folder. So I see my clip has completed transferring to the cartridge. And so another unique feature with uh, ODA drives and uh, cartridges is the fact that I can play the file directly off the cartridge. So as a final check, I have a uh, preview here. I have a clip selected, I hit preview, window pops up. I can preview it either on my uh, client computer or if I'm connected to SDI4 with a picture monitor, I can see it live on a picture monitor, a larger picture monitor, but the clip is loaded, it's ready to be played. So now this is playing directly off of the ODA drive. So it was a brief pause for the playback to start up and it's completed. So you have a way end to end to check the, the clip. All right, so that's the previewing the finished clip. All right, as a final demonstration, I'd like to show you, um, because we've got a web page and uh, web clients uh, logged in, uh, that's exactly what I've done. So in this first tab, I can either be logged in as myself uh, multiple times or as a different user. All right, so I'm logged in as one user. I'm going to mark uh, in and out point here. So I can be digitizing, reviewing a clip, um, anything like that. So let me, let me do that. We'll do, um, we'll set that up here and to list, we'll get this started. So this is started now, right? I can be here as another user on SDI two, and I can be reviewing a clip, digitizing a clip, a third user. I can be logged in looking at SDI three and I'll, play my tape again uh, marking in and out points that sort of thing so I can be busy going about the business of digitizing here you've got that and I've got a clip name and a real number okay we can start start the digitizing process there all right, so in my fourth tab, I might be uh, reviewing a clip. But if I want to take it, take a look at all four tabs simultaneously, I can break these up to separate windows to show you that we can have things happening on different clients with the same server. So while tape is being digitized, someone else can be reviewing a clip, adding metadata, that sort of thing. All right, so that's, uh, that's uh, an example of uh, a few different workflows and uh, how you might use the PWS 100 TD1. So that about wraps it up. Thanks for watching.